fucked with the burp. <laughs> hey, what up, everybody? Paige Latour here from Hope in Motion. Boom, boom, bang. I got my man Joshua Luciano from the Heart Locker Project hanging with us. What up, Josh? What up, man? How's it going? I just realized I said, like, your whole birth name. You did. <laughs> Do you have a middle name, too? No, I don't, actually. I said your whole birth name. You did. You just gave the whole Sorry. description. <laughs> and his, uh, his zip code is... His social security, social security. Is, <laughs> Man, what else can I possibly divulge of your personal information? <laughs> Bank Look cards. At, I wasn't even three seconds into this broadcast, and I'm already messing up. <laughs> oh, man. It's Help me. Good, man. Help yeah. me, Lord. So, um, yeah, we're happy to have you, man. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hop on our... Um, Facebook, our Twitter, all that fun stuff, and I, I can tell you're typing away too. We're just going to blast yep. this thing out to you guys because we want to make sure you have an opportunity to come hang with us, and uh, we're going to have a good time tonight. We're going to party. Uh, I don't know what that means exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea. I have water. I have, yeah, I know. I have, uh, it looks like I'm drinking <laughs> coffee and a California mug while I'm hanging out in Florida, which nice. I'm hanging out in Florida right now. I'm not in California, but I will say this isn't coffee. My wife would not let me go to Starbucks. That's a true story. So if she's watching, boom, what? What? Um, she wouldn't let me go to Starbucks, man. What's up with that? That's bad. That's bad. That's how you know times are rough when you just yeah. can't go to Starbucks. Your wife's like, no, you're not going to spend money on coffee. But gotta, I'm kind of a diva about my coffee. I like sweet coffee. At least, yeah, I feel you. Yeah, a lot of sugar for me is like, we're good to go. So instead, I'm drinking this stuff called Spark, which is really, it's actually pretty good. It's just like a energy, vitamin C, this and that, so I don't get the flu type of thing. Nice. Are you, so, are you still getting allergies by any chance? I know you had um, allergy issues last time. <laughs> I did. I had some really bad allergy issues last time. Not really. Um, I still I still wake up with a little bit of allergy stuff going on, which I don't know what that's about. But um, apparently this stuff I'm drinking is not helping. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's not good. But I'm alive. Yeah, that's good. Me too. Um, I'm hanging out with you, and I'm excited to be hanging, and in case you guys don't know, you're probably wondering who the heck are these guys and what the heck are they doing. I'll let you know right now, player. So here's the deal. Um, I'm feeling really goofy right now. I don't know what it is, so I apologize. You're going to probably hear some, some random jokes, some really bad jokes tonight. Usually when I'm feeling goofy, all my cheesy jokes come out, so <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I don't even know what I was going to say. I totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm sure it was good. Uh, oh, you know what? I will tell you this. So I wore this um, shirt I have on recently. I got it while I was out in L.A. with my man, um, my dude, my dude friend, Manuel. We were at a thrift store, and I got this thing thinking, like, this is the coolest shirt ever. And then somebody the other day was like, is that a trash bag? I was like, what? <laughs> yes, it is. No, I'm saying it's actually, it's actually, It's nice. I actually like it. It has that L.A. swag to it, though. That's the thing. That's what we do. Swag. L.A. I don't even know how to do an L.A. <laughs> gang sign yet, but what? There it is. What? Is that backwards? Um, yeah. No, no. That was actually good. <laughs> it, was on, it was on point. It's what I do. I do that on a daily. So, so yeah. Come hang out with awesome. us. Uh, tell your friends. Uh, if you go on our Twitter, at Hope and Tweets. If you go on our Facebook, facebook.com slash Hope and Motion Fans. If you go on my personal one, Pedro Latore, uh, you can see the link. Click on the link. We already got some people tuning in, which is awesome. We're on takeoff tonight, people. That's and awesome. um, we're going to be hanging out. So I got my man Josh with me. He's from an amazing band called, tell him, Josh. It's called The Heart Locker. The Heart Locker. And they're amazing. They have amazing music. It's like a mixture between Elvis Presley <laughs> and Rihanna. <laughs> That's nice. That's Ain't a good nothing mix. but a hound under no. my umbrella. <laughs> Ella, Ella, a, a, it's kind of it's it's a fusion, you know. Yeah, it's it's one of those eclectic type of bands. <laughs> it's like really what would happen much. if you mixed a bag of kittens and one big giraffe, and in one big room, and you just shook them. That's kind of what it sounds like. Yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of room room echo. It's crazy. Exactly. Anyway, so tell them a little bit about the Heart Locker, where you guys came from, what are you doing, your music, what does it actually sound like, because we know it doesn't sound like giraffes. <laughs> yeah, sure, man. Uh, well, the Heart Locker, uh, it's a group of guys, four guys, me, Anthony, uh, Josh, and Joey, and we're all from Philadelphia, the urban area, the urban part of Philadelphia, so North Philadelphia is where uh, we're all from, and uh, some of us are married, some of us have girlfriends, some of us have babies on the way, and um, 
yeah, it's really interesting uh, being a part with these guys, and uh, it's been a great like year and a half, I believe. No, year and like five months. So we've been together for like a year. Yeah, a year and five months. So it's we're we're fresh. So this is pretty much a fresh band right off the press, and uh, yeah, we've been doing some really cool things, uh, and you know, some opportunities have been awesome. So. Awesome. I don't even, I'm sitting here thinking about it, and it, I'm bad with, like, I'm bad with names and places and cities and where I've been, where I haven't been. How did we initially meet? Was it, was it E-Harmony? I can't no, <laughs> E-Harmony for musicians. No, uh, <laughs> no uh, yeah, I, I, it was actually a, a Facebook message I sent you. One day, I sent you a Facebook message, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to contact this guy. He doesn't know me. And... It, I think it was maybe like a week or so. I totally forgot that I sent you the message. <laughs> and you sent me a message. Hey, uh, how's it going? Let's chat. <laughs> and I was like, I think I was doing homework at that time. <laughs> the moment I was doing homework, I was like, oh, man, forget my homework. I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and link up with this guy. And that's how we met. And then, yeah, it was pretty awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. Well, I'm glad we're getting to hang out. We, we kind of got to cross paths a little bit. I was doing a show at the time, I think, with KJ52. I don't remember where that was. I told you yeah. that was cities, but it was wherever in, that was. Six Flags. Six Flags. Where was that again? Yep. Six Flags. <laughs> was that in New Jersey? Yeah, uh, yeah, New Jersey, yeah. Boom. There you go. I was thinking yeah. Texas. I was like, but you won't live anywhere near Texas. Whoa. Um, so, yeah, Six Flags, New Jersey. Yeah. And uh, we. I think I was in the audience. I think. Did you get to see our set with KJ? Yeah, I was there from the beginning. Cool. So we got uh, to see, we got to hang out briefly there. We I think we watched a little bit of Jamie Grace's show together, and yep. she killed it. She's awesome. Yeah, she's yeah, she's a beast. And then um, yeah, man. So if you don't know, definitely check out the Heart Locker. You can go to theheartlocker.com. They have a fresh video up. You can check out right there. And then also, um, they're in kind of a middle of like a re a rebranding phase, which is always fun. I know as a as a young organization, we. I feel like we've always been in a rebranding phase <laughs> since the moment we yeah. became an organization. Yeah. But um, Josh has been a huge instrument in just our logos and our just our website and the look and feel of what you see as Hope Emotion. And we're still in the process of developing it and making it even better. If we could just pay him a little bit more, that would probably be wow. better. <laughs> we'll talk later on that. And um, so yeah, so. Tell them a little bit about how, why the name change. It kind of was start off as like the Heart Locker Project, but why is it changing now? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, when, when the idea was given to me about starting this band, and um, you know, it, at first it, I wanted it to be just like this really cool production where it's like a bunch of artists into this in, in one production, and it's just like just one project I always wanted to do, and that led to throughout that year. I think it was like 2011. Throughout that year, uh, I ran into Anthony, stumbled upon Joey, and uh, Josh was uh, always like a friend of mine. Yeah, I've known him for like three years already, so I, you know, knew him prior. And um, you know, we just we all decided to just you know to hang out and just jam and talk about the the idea of maybe possibly doing something together uh, for this one project. And it ended up be actually becoming, you know, us deciding to, hey, let's just take it a step further and let's make this a band. And, you know, that we released our EP back in April 2013. And, and from there it was like, okay, that's, yeah, we're, we're going to keep it as just, just a band. And, you know, lately it was just, we were just talking about the whole rebranding stage and I kind of threw them off a little bit when I told them that. <laughs> They're like, wait, you're going to change the name? I'm like, yeah, kind of. I'm going to. We're thinking of just taking up project because you know it's more than one CD. So, and lately people have been just like reaching out to us and saying, "Hey, the Heart Locker," and they introduce us as the Heart Locker. And I will always say to myself before we go on stage, "It's like, no, they forgot the word project." No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, okay, it kind of makes sense that people are saying the Heart Locker. You know, so that's kind of like where we decided to go go that route. So this year, you can, there's going to be a lot of rebranding. Uh, you know, already on, on our Facebook, we, once we posted the Heart Locker, people were asking us, whoa, what's going on? You know, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. I actually like it because it gives, like, a, a, a sense of just a buzz and, like, while wow, these guys are working on something, you know, like, cohesive. So yeah, it's man. pretty cool. I think it's awesome. I think one thing, you know, one thing I've noticed, there's a lot of bands out there and um, a whole lot of bands. You and I both know there's a lot of yeah. bands out there. And 
there's a lot of times, like most bands just kind of like were like, yo, we just were sitting around one day and playing Garage Band, you know, or, or whatever, playing, you know, some video games, and we were like, hey, let's play music. And yeah. for you guys, like you guys had a much more focused, concentrated approach to why you started. And I, I purposefully wanted to have you on tonight because I knew, you know, this band was really launched out of your own personal story, which is incredible. And then it's even more incredible when people get to hear a little bit about it. So I want you to take a quick moment and just share with all the different Hope in Motion family and, and your friends tuning in about how you guys started, uh, what the vision is right now for the band moving forward, and then we'll kind of move into some other stuff too as we keep going. Yeah, uh, well, the, the band started back in 2010, uh, with the idea of this concept of a project, we'll say. Uh, it started when my dad passed away from cancer. It was like a three-year battle, so 07, he was diagnosed September 2010. He passed away, and a week before he passed away, I told him that I was going to do something with music. I have no idea, because <laughs> I, I didn't want to sound cliche and say, we're going to sound different, or we're going to be different, when pretty much all all the bands that are out there now have some influence from the past, so you're not kind of like, we're not unique in that sense. You know? right. So I didn't want to sound cliche, so I, I, I think what really hit me was that I wanted to be able to uh, give back somehow. That's always been, a, I guess you could call it a form of missionary type of feel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wanted to just give back, you know, wh whether that means, you know, giving back to the community or to people that are suffering through the same disease that, you know, my dad had passed away from. So, you know, he died from cancer. So, and the first, uh, like, initial thoughts were, okay, how am I going to help out people who have cancer? So the first project, you know, you know, fast forwarding, the, the first project, uh, helped a cancer organization, uh, well, a hospital really, uh, St. Christopher uh, Children's Hospital, and uh, in Philadelphia, and we gave uh, a dollar per CD that gets sold. That we gave them a dollar per CD for the, like the first three months, and we gave them about it was almost like three hundred dollars. So you know we had a you know our first EP gave them first three hundred dollars from our earnings. Wow. Uh, and you know we gave it to them, and that was really cool. So it, to us, that's like a way uh, of just giving back. You know, it might, we might not go to, like, Africa or something or Japan or Haiti, which would be cool, but, you know, that's just our way of just giving back pretty much. And, uh, you know, we felt really awesome when we did that. And, you know, hopefully the next project we go somewhere else and we give back. So it's cool. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I definitely yeah. think it's I, – I, I love the story. I've always loved your story. And I love the fact that you guys are so focused. How in the world do you pick band members, though, who believe in that vision and support that vision? How did you kind of – find the guys that you have right now and how did you gel with them initially? Did you share this story with them? Were they a part of that story with you? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, it was kind of like a trial period because I'm very, cause now, for, now just to clarify, like before this band, I was in a band for five years already. So I kind of like experienced the do's okay. and the don'ts, it, which is a great group of friends of mine. They're like my brothers called 424. Uh, they're great guys. And a great band, and um, you know, I learned a lot from there. That I grown as a musician and just as a as a leader, you know, as a person now leading this this band or being what uh, you know a leader in this particular band. Uh, so you know, uh, it, it was just you know meeting people and just patience. I think patience is something that it's really important when it comes to you know anything that you do in life. You know, whether it's during school, you know, work, anything. So you know, I, I just had to be patient and make sure that the people that came into my life and that were possibly going to be part of this uh, particular uh, band is that they, you know, that they ha they're patient themselves. They have patience as well, you know, and they have the same kind of uh, uh, thinking and way of for the, the band's vision, you know, where we want to go and everyone's just being in the same mindset. So, you know, it, it took, you know, time just becoming friends. Uh, and I think that's like the best way to start off is just becoming friends, just writing and just collaborating, you know. And then the next step, you know, after a year was like, okay, this seems like a good fit. Now let's see if we can actually do this. And that was back in uh in 2012 when we started recording the the first EP. You know, that was and I, I believe I wrote on Facebook it was the the first day of recording. I said, uh, yes, now we're a band. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, I know that feeling, man. I remember the first, uh, the very first time 
I ever uh, spoke in a school, and I remember getting off stage and having that same thought of like, okay, now I'm a speaker. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter if I was good or not. I'm a speaker. I spoke. Yeah. And uh, there, there is something kind of liberating about uh, having that first moment where you can look back and be like, okay, it's official. Like, I really do this now. Yeah. I remember the first time I played a show as a drummer, and boy, was that rough. Um, we won't talk too much about that. <laughs> but I remember one of the first big concerts I did with um, KJ52. Okay. And I remember just feeling like I was, like, your first few moments when you get off stage, you feel incredible because the adrenaline's pumping. Yeah. But then you get a bottle of water and you sit down and you start reflecting on all those mess-ups and why are my hands bleeding so bad and what did I do wrong and why did I break seven pairs of sticks? How did yeah. that happen? And you start thinking all these things and you're like, wow, I'm really horrible. I'll tell you this, man, like the first time I had done that, I wanted to quit so the fact that you guys have kept going, um, I mean, I'm sure there's been adversity and all that kind of stuff. Do you guys find yourselves in arguments and stuff like that ever? Want to oh, beat each man. other up? Want to throw somebody under a bus? Literally, <laughs> not metaphorically. Yeah, oh, man, it's so funny that you, that you just brought that up, up. So, like, in the beginning of, of like, the first year, before we actually became a band, you know, we're still collaborating, just, you know, just jamming out and stuff. And Anthony went on this, like, ninja mode where you could not find him, right? So we always make fun of him because he went ghost on us. We'll say he went ghost. And it, it's, it, and I think because of that, that's what made the, the us as a, a, as a pre-band, like, stronger because we actually reached out to him and then he was able to open up with what he was going through. And then, you know, we're just like, hey, like, we're like, we're like brothers, man. You just got to be honest with whatever, with whoever, like, whatever situation that we're going through, just open up, you know, don't bottle yourself up and then, like, disappear. So yeah. it was, like, stress because, like, we would record, like, one song three at three different places, and it all went wrong. Like, everything wow. went wrong. Everything went bad. <laughs> and this was, this was before we actually had, like, the funds to actually go to an actual real studio and actually get it done. So we would try to do shortcuts and say, all right, let's just record this to see how it sounds, and it will be really bad. So I guess discouragement was, like, the first lesson of being in a band, being like, you know, how to overcome this being discouraged, you know, and um, going through obstacles and whatever. It could be life. It could be again, whatever that uh, comes up in life. You know, how we're gonna how we're gonna overcome the speed bump. Yeah. You know, and that's and those are like lessons that we've been learning. You know, even till now. Like, I, there's moments when I, I I freak out. You know, and the guys are like, Hey, Josh, you have to relax. It's it's gonna take time. And it's patience, and I'm like, you know what, guys, you're right. I'm sorry, that you know. And I, they, uh, what I like about them is that they keep me on track as well. And uh, it's the same thing. Everyone keeps is like account. They're they're accountable. Everyone's accountable, you know, with each other. So it's pretty. It's a pretty. Uh, it, you know, we all have different personalities, which is cool. But it's it's like, how do we handle these different personalities? I guess there's always it will always be the challenge. It's like yeah. even in a family, you know. So. Yeah, man, it's good though. It's good. You guys are are fam like family. You trust each other, and the ups and downs are gonna come. You know, we tell students all the time when we're doing school assemblies, we're like, yo, it's important that you surround yourself with people that um, you can be honest with, and that will be honest with you, um, based yeah. on your beliefs and your your moral convictions, your uh, your dreams, you know, it's it's important that you find people that are going to support that. If I had one regret about my high school years, it was that I didn't surround myself with as many um, like-minded people, uh, you know, like as many dreamers and as many hard-working people. I kind of surrounded myself at times with people who just wanted to coast and just wanted to get by. Yeah. And I think at times that that pulled me into that same way of thinking. And so now as I'm getting older, I'm like, okay, not that I'm getting old, but I'm getting older. <laughs> I think to myself, man, you know, it's so key that I surround myself with people that are, I have intentional relationships, you know. I have one, I have one friend out in California. He literally won't even go, like, have lunch with somebody unless there's a purpose. Like, we spend time so we can get better and we can get stronger and we can get smarter and we can get wiser and we can build. If you're just wanting to go to In and Out and eat burgers, like yeah. that's not gonna cut it, you know. And so, you know, some people don't like that. Some people like it, but I like people who are intentional and who are like, "Hey, everything matters." I was driving in a car this past weekend, and with my uh, in-laws, we were talking about life and people and and travel and all these different things. And I said, they said, somebody said, like, "What's the thing you hate the most?" Like when it comes to people and relationships. And I said, "Small talk." 
I hate <laughs> small talk. Like I can't talk about the curtains, you know, on the wall. Oh, those are nice curtains, Sally. Yeah, yeah. I can't do that, man. I can't. I can't talk <laughs> about some curtains. Um, it just so don't. Important. It just don't work. So it's important that we all surround ourselves with people, man, that we can be ourselves around. You know, our whole mission with Hope in Motion is like be yourself. No yeah. matter what, no matter where you are or what situation you find yourself in, if you stay true to who you are, there's something powerful about that, you know? Yeah. And I think it's cool with your music and, and what you guys are doing that you're saying, hey, we're going to be who we are. Like, we have an identity. Um, we have a vision. We have a plan. I mean, the music, the first time I heard y'all's music, what blew me away wasn't even just that the sound was great or that the recording was solid. It wasn't even that. It was that there was a missional way of thinking behind your music, that you were writing songs that young people especially could really vibe with and relate to, not just songs that you guys thought like, oh, this is catchy or this is creative. Yeah. It was like, yo, this is creative music, yes, but it's music with a mission, and I dig that. Secondly, if you don't know about um, the Heart Locker guys and their music, like, go check it out. You can go on iTunes and obviously get their music there. Um, you can also check them out on our Broken Dreams and Bright Futures mixtape, which we kind of plug every single week. Uh, not so much yep. because we want or even need the money. It's just because we want you guys to get it because it's really good. And you can actually go on Noise Trade and get it for free, or you can leave us a tip, um, which I won't decline because then I can go to Starbucks and my, my wife won't be mad at me. So I'll spend your money <laughs> at Starbucks, not mine. I kid, I joke. So anyway, man, um, I'm excited to have you on. Uh, Thanks, tell man. everyone, like, just give them your quick, like, your social media plugs, so that they, yeah. even as we hang out now, we got we got some people on, they can go check it, click on your stuff, and follow you guys. Yeah, sure. I, you can follow follow us on Facebook at Facebook slash The Heart Locker. And um, both for um, for Instagram and Twitter, you can follow us at HLP underscore music. And for YouTube, it's Heart Lock TV. Boom. Yeah, I like it. It's interesting. You know what? I wanted to ask you something. I've been dying to ask you. Hit me. When you first... When you first, because I know, uh, I'm pretty sure everyone knows already about this, but, you know, you're, you're starting a tour with Group 1 Crew, right? It, I, I think is that's, that's amazing. So yeah. I, I, my question to you is, meeting the band, the band members, a new band, right, fresh guys. I don't, I don't even know if you knew them already, but it's a fresh group of guys, let's say, right? How was it? How was, like, the first, like, meeting, like, oh, hey, guys, I'm the new drummer? <laughs> um, it, it's... It's nerve-wracking, man. It really yeah. is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't be human if I said otherwise. I feel like, you know, maybe there's other people out there who are different. But, I mean, the situation was kind of weird for me because it was awesome in the sense, like, I've always known, I've known Manuel for a long time, you know. Manuel and I, um, we did a tour when I was with KJ5 too, like a little Florida run. It was probably three or four shows maybe. And um, we played in probably we played probably one of the worst shows together on that tour that any of us had ever played. It was like in a bar and there was like cocaine and and uh, <laughs> alcohol stuck inside the soundboard. I mean nothing would move on the soundboard cuz there was literally oh, I mean, it's a true story. You can't make this up. Over KJ52's merch table it said Bud Light. You know what I mean? It's like I took a picture <laughs> just in case he would forget that one day. I still have it on my computer. It's pretty funny. Oh man. I'm going to send that to you KJ. Um so it's just like this really awkward show where I'm like, this is so awkward for us. And yeah. anyway, so I knew Manuel from like way back then. And um, and here's the funny, the, the interesting thing is like when I came into the band, I didn't know anybody else really except for Manuel. And so, yeah, it was it was okay. weird because you're, you're meeting all these people. And I actually tried out to be the drummer and there was some other really talented, frankly, probably more talented than me, I feel like, drummers. That tried out as well, and um, and so it was kind of a weird process. I was up there, I think, speaking or doing something, maybe playing with KJ in Orlando when I got the call to go in for the tryout, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it. So I went in, and I didn't really think much of it. I went back to this show we were playing, and then I got the call that night, and they're like, hey, you got the gig, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I was looking for a job at Chipotle. Like, I didn't, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't. Um, cool. And so yeah. for me, man, like music, music has really always been – um, for lack of a better term, an opportunity for me to get money from doing music to pay for Hope in Motion, for us to go do schools, kind of like you, man. It's just a missional way of thinking like, man, God, you've yeah. given me this thing that I can use to go do something else, and I'm going to do it with love and, and joy. And so 
to be honest with you, dude, like Manuel from Group One is one of the coolest people I know. He's just um, he's so stable in his beliefs and his yeah. his actions. More importantly, not just what he believes, but the way he acts in those beliefs. And you know, we're all we're all uh, human, but he's just an awesome dude. I'm learning a lot from them. And then we got two other guys in the band. Um, we call one's called Snoopy, is the bass player, and yeah. the the other one is Lance, and they're phenomenal musicians and probably even better just people to be around. And then we got a brand new singer who's coming in as well, Sarah, who we're super stoked about. And so we we leave this next weekend to head up to um, Nashville, and then we kind of roll out to do a couple days of tour rehearsals, and then we'll do 48 cities in the next um, three months. We'll hit 48 Ooh. cities. So that sounds so, yeah, man. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it'll be exciting. It's I'm more excited. Like I love playing music, but I'm more excited to spend time with them, you know, and yeah, and do life with them and just learn about their stories more. And then at the same time, when I'm in Nashville. Um, we'll be doing some school assemblies out there, which is crazy, and I'm super pumped about that. I'll speak into some different churches, partner with some organizations, and uh, hopefully raise some funds for Hope in Motion so we can keep going. And uh, but yeah, so it, it's always a little, it's always a little crazy. And you know, people always say, people always want to know, how in the world did you get an opportunity like that? You know, and <laughs> one thing I like to encourage people on is this: um, playing with KJ52. I served at his music video where he did a music video one time. I served him pizza and um, and just was there to help out on the shoot. And we sat down. I shared a little bit of my story with him. And the following months, I got a phone call from his DJ. One thing led to another. I became his drummer. Nice. Um, and that's how that happened. With Group One Crew, I served. I set up their green room at this church I was working at. And um, I just ran their green room on fruits and veggies and the whole decor and the seating and the and I did it with excellence and I worked hard and I, I loved on them when they came and and I, that was the first time I had met them not knowing that years and years and years later I would be playing drums for them so there's something powerful about doing your best where you are giving everything you've got working hard uh, despite what opportunities may look like in the moment. Um, and both of those situations just came from me serving. And like I said, I don't feel like the greatest drummer in the world. I'm gonna I'm gonna work hard, but there's probably more talented people out there. But I think it's it, life comes down to relationships and yeah. Um, and it's more than just how good we are at our instruments. And that's what I love about you guys is like you guys realize that like it's it, this is bigger than just how awesome we can you know play in seven eight or how awesome we can <laughs> lay down a drum solo or. Yeah. How many shows we can rock with the next big uh, artist out there? It's it's about a mission. It's about changing lives. It's about doing life together. And you guys have got that. And that's probably, frankly, that's one of those things that most bands don't get in twenty years of playing music together. They just they they focus on money and and uh, success and not on impact. How can we impact this world? How can we leave a legacy? And you're doing that through your father's story. You know, you took something yeah. that was dirty and frustrating and, and probably extremely painful and hard to watch and you decided I'm going to platform this to do something good and impact the world and you even told him that which I think is incredible you're <laughs> like yo we're going to do something different I don't know what that means but it's going to be great yeah exactly. and um, man I got I to gotta believe that your dad's looking down from somewhere going like he, he wasn't kidding that, that little <laughs> he, he's, he's serious and yeah. so I'm I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud to call you friend. I'm proud to have you on Thanks, tonight, man. and um, I'm proud of what you guys are all about. And in case you guys don't know, we're gonna keep collaborating with um, with oh, these sure. guys. We believe in them. We believe in what they do. And I told Derek last week. I don't know if you heard me. I was like, "Yo, y'all need to write a song for Hope in Motion, like a theme song. We need a theme." Oh yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put the same challenge in front of you guys now, and whoever <laughs> gets it in first. Or maybe oh. who's, I'm just saying, or whoever is better, no competition, no but competition. whoever is better, maybe we can take that and maybe do a music video. So I'm gonna hit up Brian and say, hey man, you should not like, you shouldn't, you should, just, I mean, just follow these lyrics that I'm giving you. Yeah, you know, just follow them. Here's what I think. Here's what I think, because I wanna, I wanna talk about the Olympics, and I think this is a perfect yeah. segue. I think there should be Olympics centered around songwriting, the songwriting Olympics. Hmm. And you take okay. a crowd of 5,000 people and you bring these bands out who have written these songs and it's got to move the people. It's all about if they stand up, if they nod their head, if they tap their feet, if they throw their uh, cotton candy in the air and go crazy. Like it yeah. should just be a songwriting Olympic competition and they should all have to wear spandex. 
Wow. Not the crowd, the band members. <laughs> Everybody has to be in spandex. <laughs> and goggles, big goggles. Big goggles. Big goggles. Oh, what do you man. think about that? Let's do it. Let's make it happen. I think it's awesome. I think the spandex might be a challenge, but hey, I'm up for a challenge. It's cool. <laughs> as long as it's not Winter Olympics, it's, it might get really cold. But if, <laughs> if it's outdoor. But uh, yeah, man. I think that, that. You know, honestly, I think that'd be really cool to see that. Actually, like this type of an Olympics for musicians. You know, and, and it's not like it's like a. It's not like not just musicianship that you're looking at. It's not like guitar center drum off. It's not like that. Right. It's like. It's like, yo, we have to like really move this crowd. And there's yeah. so many, there's so many personalities. You might catch someone who is always jumping in on a bad day. You know, <laughs> so exactly. it's like how we're gonna. Yeah, that's the challenge. I think that'll be awesome. I think it could be pretty outstanding. So Man, we need you, <laughs> if you were an Olympian, what 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 sport would you be in? Oh man, I was so I would do snowboarding. Mm. Uh, or or. Or, uh, wait, is it winter or summer? Uh, winter. Winter, okay, so winter, uh, I think the uh, speed skating, the, uh, I think Apollo Ono, I think that's his name? Yeah, Apollo yeah. Ono. Yeah, yeah that's, that's been the guy I always, like, looked, always watched him. That, and that's, like, the only, I think, the, the skater that I actually, like, notice all the time. Like, I, I know that guy. Like, he's, he's an amazing, like, just an Olympian. He's a beast, like, and they go so fast. <laughs> they go so fast, and it looks like they're going slow. <laughs> like, I, that's going, it. They go so fast that it looks like they're actually just barely trying. Yeah, and it. I mean, there's so much work to put in. I mean, think about it. It's four years, right? Like four years of training. I can't imagine doing four years of training for like one moment or two moments. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's crazy. That's that's if that was to be the uh, music, the the band Olympics. That's that's serious for one. That's can like you one show. Now, can, you just, can you put your imagination cap on with me right now and imagine all yeah. the bands like backstage, like the drummers like stretching out, looking at each other. <laughs> like choose your stick. Yeah, you're picking your sticks really? out and you're like spinning them, just intimidating yeah. the guy. You're like, hey, what up, what up? And then you'll have that one guy, that one drummer that's just not doing anything, and he's yeah. like, and he's, he's really making people it. nervous because he's just like, yeah, like poker face. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> poker face. And then he, then he goes to get up on stage. He's like, "Hey man, can I borrow your sticks?" <laughs> he's just he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's not even there right now. That would probably be me. <laughs> can I borrow your symbols? I didn't bring anything. Hey, I thought I thought this was happening next year. I thought we had a whole yeah. other year to practice. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know what I would do if I was in the Olympics, Winter Olympics. I don't. I like the downhill. That's... I don't know what it's called where you go down and you go up on the ramp and you fly in the air. That thing. Do you have skis on? Yeah. Yeah, that's serious. I was watching that. What Sunday was it? Was it Sunday or Saturday that they had that? It was like it was yeah, Sunday. I think so. I saw it too. Yeah, that's and serious, man. And I think it's man. cool because I watched. There's a documentary on Netflix about it for the for the women. This is like the first year I think that, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, that the women are getting to do it. Yep. And it's pretty cool. I watched the story, and what stinks is like there's this whole group of young women who were training and training and training. They brought it before, you know, the Olympic board and the committees and all that, and they turned them down because they're like, no, this has always been a, a male dominant sport, and it's like the yeah. only sport in the Olympics or the only um, item that's not been legalized as like a a woman's thing too, which is crazy. And I guess they were trying to use the excuse of like, well, women are lighter than men, and so it's not fair. It's not an equally balanced competition. <laughs> and then it sounded like it was they were just kind of like saying, oh, well, women shouldn't be allowed to. So it's pretty yeah. awesome that this year they're getting to, although there's a group of young women who trained their whole life to do it and aren't getting the opportunity to, but they did pave the way for um, yeah. future Olympians, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's cool. I, I think I saw a post about that earlier today. Uh, a few or if not many of the women that are in that sport said that they're willing to risk the injury. Like, they don't care. Like, wow. let's do it. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's that's pretty – I mean, to, to see – I mean, you know, just to see women do any kind of Olympic sport, I think that's awesome. Because yeah. I think that that just breaks the barrier of like it has to be men to be Olympians. Like, no. yeah, like, women can do it too, and I, I think that's awesome. Yeah, and it's not even like they can do it too, because there's some women who are just flat out better than these guys. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like, oh yeah, uh, fellas, y'all should probably give up and go work <laughs> at like a realty group or something, because yeah, these yeah. girls got it going on. Like it's just true. Like sometimes women are good. Like for instance, I think women are really good at soccer. Like they're oh, hardcore. Sure. If you ever watch women's soccer, they are hard. It's like watching rugby. Yeah, it's no, they go hard. Yeah. They go hard. They don't <laughs> play around. I'm just saying. Anyway, enough about our Olympic <laughs> Olympic talk. 
Uh, let's play a little game. This game's called Thumbs Up or Thumbs Down. I know uh, you, you've watched, you've watched yeah. before. So um, I'm going to ask some random ones tonight. And okay. I'm only going to do a few, and then I'm going to move into a new game that I haven't done. It's called Blank or Blank. But this one, Thumbs Up, Thumbs Down. So it's just so people can learn about you. You know what I'm sure. saying? Like, so Thumbs Up, Thumbs Down. Chinese food. Oh, that's a thumbs up for me, man. Boom. Philly cheesesteak, Philly cheesesteaks sandwiches from California. From California? Oh, that's I gotta bring that down. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Although there it. is a good place next to my place in LA, there is a good Philly cheesesteak place. Really? Probably, they use cheese whiz. They say it's the real deal. Yeah, that's how that's in Philly. That's how it's made. Like actual look, real cheesesteak, cheese whiz. Yeah, you know, like you you yeah. have a a small heart attack. Right after yeah. you're eating it every time, which is my favorite thing in the world. Um, <laughs> McDonald's. No, I'm. I, I you know I used to eat I used to eat McDonald's a lot and just I just had to stop. I was, yeah. You know all it's the reports bad. it just threw me and then ever since my dad it was like nah I'm good. Yeah. So, yeah. Good Taco that. Bell. It's, it's the same way. I haven't eaten Taco Bell in a while. <laughs> yeah, it's the same, yeah. same thing across the board. <laughs> yeah. My dad's like, uh, let me think. What's the name of those? Um, what's the name of those? Holistic food places. <laughs> like, Chipotle is awesome. Hey, Chipotle, what up? Yeah, like I'll hey, definitely eat. Speaking of Chipotle, food. there is a correlation between McDonald's and Chipotle that I bet you did not know, or maybe you did because you're a designer. No, actually, school me on this one. I get you right here. Ready? Sure. So Chipotle uh, was initially the largest. The largest investor in Chipotle initially was McDonald's. The McDonald's yeah. pretty much owned the majority of Chipotle, and then they ended up breaking off because McDonald's wanted to do everything cheaper yeah. and Chipotle valued quality food and all that stuff. So it makes me all the more appreciate Chipotle. Yeah. I'm a loyal Chipotle fan. Look, Chipotle for life. What? Chipotle. Yeah. Capital C. Capital C. Hey, there's some <laughs> branding action for you right there, dude. Yeah. Um, uh, so flip-flops. Thumbs up, thumbs down to flip-flops. Flip-flops? Like, oh, flip-flop sandals? Man, uh... There were, there were, they always like, especially in the summertime, you have to have flip flops, man. Like, there's some guys who I gotta tell you who are, who are like, completely anti, like KJ five two. You'll never yeah. catch him in a flip flop. He wears the socks with the sand with the with the Adidas. Does he do that? <laughs> I've never yeah. seen him do that. He, I think he used to do that like back in the day, day. Like, okay, way okay. Back. That's like basketball player. Like, yeah, I'm a basketball player. <laughs> yeah, and that's how you always know they're basketball players because they got like. Yeah. They got their food on their socks because you can see yeah. their socks and they've been dropping their food. It's nasty. Yeah. Gotcha. I don't know where that came from. Skinny jeans. Ooh, okay. So now it depends. So I have to go, I have to go middle on that one because some skinny jeans, they, they fit awesome. Some, they just, mm -mm. They're too skinny, man. It's just, it's like, I need, like my, my, my calf muscles need to breathe. Like, ah, that's funny. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of hard playing drums too with skinny jeans. It's, like, it's so true. Difficult. Yeah. It's true. I remember when skinny jeans started making a comeback because they used to be in like way, way, way back, probably oh, yeah. before you and I were even like really around and yeah. um, our parents' days. And then I start. I remember being like, okay, I think I could pull this off. And then I tried them on, and I was like, I no literally way. can't pull them <laughs> off. I can't pull them <laughs> off my body. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, oh, man, that's so, tough, bro. <laughs> I had to, I had to run in them for a week and lose like ten pounds before I could take them off. I'm just kidding. I just not. <laughs> now you used to play baseball, right? You was a baseball, baseball guy. So I was, and that means you got, you got booty and you got calf muscles for days. <laughs> Too much <laughs> booty and calf muscles. <laughs> Yo, but it's it's crazy because like there's only one pair of brand jeans that that are skinny that fits me well, you know, and that's it. Which like, one? At least from what uh, I go to Route 21 to get my skinny jeans. Oh, those are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like they the feel like. Place. See the other place, a little a little fashion tip for you is Cotton On, which I'm not sure if y'all have it up there. I don't. Nah, Cotton On. Nah. Cotton On is an Australian company, and their oh. sizes run small because Australian people tend to be tiny. Yeah. But um, I get like two sizes up. No, than my normal, and then they fit perfect. So oh, I'm gonna check them out. They they I think they think I'm buying like skinny jeans for my dad or something when I go in because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I need size um 38, and they're like, you don't wear a 38, and I'm like, yes I do. Yes, yes I do. <laughs> so, <laughs> or I say no, they're for my dad. Like he's trying to you know be in with the times. So <laughs> love you, dad. <laughs> my dad's probably watching like, what? I don't want no skinny jeans. <laughs> 
Uh, yes, you That's do. Awesome. Oh, my dad. Okay, so this That's game awesome. is blank or blank. So you get to choose either one you would rather like or rather be doing or whatever, okay? Okay. So we'll start off with a simple one. Nintendo, Nintendo, or roller coasters? Oh, man. I have to say Nintendo. I think wow. N- Nintendo... It's, I mean, it, even going, it, okay, Super Nintendo to me was awesome. Mm-hmm. Just to say that. Like, Nintendo, I mean, oh, any brand, like, you know, and, and 64 and all that. But it, it's, N- Nintendo paved the way. I think when I, it, that's probably because when I was younger, that's when, like, when it came out, Nintendo was awesome. I used to play Duck Hunter, the you know, Duck Hunter game. Yeah, and, yeah, I remember yeah, those days. That was awesome, bro. Those, are, that, those games were awesome to me. I was like, I still play it. <laughs> He's like, I do that every day. I still do it every day, yeah. I was hoping you were going to invent, like, a hybrid. You'd be like, I'd like to play Nintendo while on a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> now, that'll be, now, that'll be awesome. <laughs> that, would, that would probably make a lot of money for somebody. Yeah, Six Flags, trademark it. <laughs> Listen up, Six Flags. We just helped you out. All I want is 50%, all right? That's, That's it. That's it. Not even. 2%. Just give you 2% of everything throughout all Six Flags. Oh, we'd be loaded. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mac or PC? Mac. I don't know how people roll on PCs. I, I, it's, you know, I, I know how to use a PC, but because I've been using Mac for, like, the past six years, it's just been awesome. It's, yeah. I, I, I can't go back to a PC. I can't. Especially with music stuff and design software. Like, I, it feels, I feel as though it just runs smoother. Yeah. Once you go Mac, you never go back. Um, for sure. Jeans or shorts? Well, if you had to live in jeans or shorts for the rest of your life, which one would you do? Now, that depends on the weather. <laughs> the, the, the weather. That's true. Now, uh, I can wear jeans. Uh, you know what? I can wear shorts. In the if it's like not, it doesn't. It can't be super cold, but I can I can live with shorts. Like if it was like mild, like at least like sixty or fifty, fifty five. Because uh-huh. that's just you know just put a hoodie on or something like that. It's like one of those, one of those like that's that like type of temperature you can wear like a hoodie and you're good. You know. Yeah. That's but, true. Uh, That's true. But I've mostly been wearing jeans because a lot of the you know when when we play at places you have to wear jeans and it's it's like it's not always summer here in Philly. So it's like yeah. Ah. So it's like buy a couple pairs of shirts in the summer and then you gotta put it away. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So this is gonna define our friendship. This next one. So this oh, is an man. important one. Nikes or Adidas? Oh. High tops. <laughs> is this like? Oh, I mean, man. it's whatever, whatever you think. Okay, so dunks to me are awesome, right? I enjoy dunks. Adidas, the only oh, man, it's tough because the, there's the high top Adidas, like the ones that are Dwayne, oh, the Dwayne Wade. Yeah. No, not Dwayne Wade. No, not uh, Dwayne Wade. Is, uh, um, man, from from well, he transferred to the Lakers, and I like a few years ago, he 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 was from Orlando. Dwight Howard. Oh, there we go. Dwight, oh, Howard. Dwight Howard. Yeah, big, so Dwight, we call him Big Shoulders. Big Shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got some big shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so Dwight. Yeah, so Dwight had those Adidas that came out like maybe like a few years ago. You know, and they were just awesome with the big Adidas logo, real sick. Those are hot. So, I mean, that it's it's tough, bro. It's tough for me to say either or. But for me, Dunks, I think are would would be Dunks are like if it was between Dunks and Adidas, then Dunks. Listen, either way you won, because right now I got some Adidas on, and right next to me I got some Nikes. So it's a <laughs> nice. trick question. You can't mess it up. I'm not gonna. Yeah. I'm not gonna. Who would hinge a relationship, an awesome Over friendship, sneakers. on some sneakers? Who would ever do? I would. I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. There's some people out there probably that would. Probably do. there are. Yeah, some shoe heads. Yeah, for sure. I got a friend who who calls everything. He's like, I'm a shoe head. I'm a church head. I'm a like. <laughs> my man. I don't know if you're watching right now, Danny, but Danny's like. Oh yeah, he he's he's a sneakerhead, or he'll be like he a Chinese food head. He don't say that, but <laughs> he take he takes it pretty That's far. Funny. I'm just saying. Okay, so <laughs> would you rather have to carry a suitcase for the rest of your life, or would you rather have a nice, comfortable, expensive man purse? Wow, <laughs> wow, a nice, comfortable, expensive man purse. I mean, if my, if my laptop could fit in it very nicely, then yeah, man uh, purse. Uh, yeah, if my laptop what? could fit in it. Yeah, because it just goes over your shoulder. Now we're talking about messenger bag. Like, wait, hold on, messenger bag or man purse? Like, those are two different things. We're talking like, about a man purse. Oh no, I'll just no, nah, give me the luggage. A purse. <laughs> purse. No, nah, give me the luggage. I like messenger nah, bag. Suitcase. Yeah, yeah, the suitcase has like, holes in it. I forgot to tell you that. Is that? Oh still okay? man, that's the. You know, I'll, 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 I'll live with this. It's called duct tape. 
<laughs> just give you some sex tape. I'm not doing no man purse. No. Like, messenger bags are dope. Would you rather eat chicken or would you rather eat steak? Uh, chicken. Ah, see, that's me too, man. My wife, every time we go to Chipotle, she's like, oh, I want the steak, blah, blah, blah. And she looks at me like I'm a lesser human being because I don't yeah. do... I don't do the steak. I'm like, I don't want the steak. It's chewier, and I got to work yeah. on my jaw hurts when I'm done. I look, I feel like I got in a fight with Mike Tyson. I don't want steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a bad experience with steak one time, like, just chewing, and my, I felt as though, like, my jaw got bigger after that. Like, my muscles, <laughs> got some definition there. I went from a poodle to a bulldog, okay? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> in one week, it's great, overnight. So, uh, for those of you who are tuning in, we're talking about poodles and bu- bulldogs tonight, so I'm glad you could join us. Um, I'm hanging out with my man Josh from the Heart Locker Band. They are a phenomenal band, phenomenal music. And uh, where are you based out of? What city do you actually live in? Uh, Philly. Uh, we are based out of North Philadelphia. Some of us live in the Northeast, but it's all in the same area. Cool, cool. Yeah. So definitely go check out their music. The easiest way probably is just go to uh, theheartlocker.com, yeah. and you can plug in with them, follow them on everything. They're amazing, and they're going to keep writing amazing music that changes the world. So definitely lock in with them. Um, do you guys have some – I know you. we were talking before we even got on about shows and different events that you guys yeah. are planning. Tell us a little bit about that, like the vision behind that, what's happening, how people can connect with you, maybe even from your area, how they can um, come check you guys out live at some point. Yeah, uh, well, you know, <clears throat> our, our our philosophy is more so, uh, you know, getting youth leaders, youth pastors, and just the churches, you know, and just unify them in, in, in a sense, you know, instead of having uh, a show a Friday night at one place and then Saturday we're playing three blocks away, let's just do one big one. Let's just all get connected and just do, you know, you know, the, the, I, I feel like unity is very important in building relationships. Uh, in any aspect in life, outside of music, anything. School, get, getting out of college, you know, not going to college, building relationships and networking is very important. So, you know, that's what we want to do. We want to be able to do, like, it would be really cool to do, like, just three or four awesome shows and then just release free content for people throughout the year. And that, that to us, is kind of like our our event, you know. It's, I think, more people will see a, a video, uh, for instance, across the country. You know, there'll be more people seeing it than having... Uh, a, a small event where, uh, you know, not many people will go because maybe it's maybe they can't make it that day or someone got sick or something. So we our, our goal is to release just fresh content, free music. You know, uh, we, we're planning on two really cool events that we're working on this year with a, a band, uh, really awesome bands in the area, in the tri-state area, a band from New York uh, called Red Letters and a band from, uh, from Philly uh, where I used to play with. Um, 424. And they're an awesome group of guys, and we're we're working all that out. So you can stay, you know, in track with us through Facebook. You know, they sign up to our email list. That's really important that we send out email blasts every once in a while when something new is happening. But Facebook is where we get more interaction, and YouTube. So you know, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll release the new cover soon, and that way you can get the free download. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, for those that go on our page and like a specific post that we did, you you will be invited to a special Google Hangout and we're going to like pre kind of pre-release the song to you you guys can hear it and you get the free download first so that's like that's kind of like how we're doing it very cool definitely um go do that cuz that sounds amazing i'm going to go do that hopefully that's awesome. okay i'm going to come <laughs> hang with you guys yeah and, sure. um, super cool and we're also i want to invite you because we are also i gave the challenge you know last week uh, to Derek from Forest Season i said look Let's write this theme song thing. So I think, in all seriousness, we we got to figure out how to do this because I think it would be incredible. And one of the things I want to do, I told my wife recently, I was like, I think it would just be cool to invite some of these bands to write songs about students. And what I want to do is send you guys maybe a few stories from recent experiences we have. And um, we were in New York recently, and and one of the young men up there has just an incredible story and is going through an incredible amount of life change. Um, and it kind of was started by Hope in Motion, by us coming to his city. So I'd love to tell that story to you guys, maybe through a forum like this or whatever, and yeah. then you guys take it and just build a song behind it. And then um, and what Hope in Motion will do is we'll, we'll fund you guys to do uh, a video, you know, low budget, but a, a pretty really quality video, and uh, we'll yeah. release it out there together to the world and encourage the yeah. world together. And so I think that would be so cool to do that. And um, we're in the process now, just so you know, too, is 
we're uh, we're going to be doing this whole series where we do kind of celebrity endorsement videos of just some amazing celebrities that are out there in Hollywood and, and really all nice. over the country that believe in hope and motion, and we're going to do some videos um, that just kind of point people back to hope and life. And so if we can have those videos with you guys done, then when we do these celebrity ones, we could be pointing people back to y'all's music and yeah. what, you know, your vision and what you're doing. So we're kind of like this is a big team and unit. So yeah. look at that, people. You're just a part of one big brainstorming session of life and love and hope. That's a good day. That's almost as good as Baskin Robbins. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. No, not, not, quite. Is good though. not quite. Not quite. <laughs> I like ice cream. <laughs> I like ice cream. I, like I don't ice eat cream. a lot of sweet stuff, but I'm I'm down for some ice cream. Last night I had some little. My wife brought me some little. I don't even know what it was. Little slushy thing. It was incredible. And then I fell asleep as I ate it. I was like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to sleep now. Oh yeah, I was in heaven. <laughs> I was in heaven uh, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, so, you ever had a cold stone? Cold oh. stone. Let's not even go there. That's a different. That's not that's even. A that's a. That's that a different is not different. even that's healthy. That's a different that's Monday. So that's a different Monday. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's a different Monday. <laughs> oh, for sure. Well, definitely. So go check out their music. Go snag the Broken Dreams Bright Futures mixtape because they're on it. Yes. And um, we're gonna have them on. And then also, I get to release tonight is some brand new news, which I haven't really shared with the world um, until this moment right now. And that is, we are going to be doing a Broken Dreams, Bright Futures, Volume 2. That's and awesome. that one's going to just go to a whole nother level. So I'm going to be working with my man, Andy Sheridan, who is uh, the keyboard player for Hunter Hayes. Some of you may have seen him on here on Motion Mondays, I don't know, a few weeks ago. And um, I'm going to be, he's a producer as well. And so while I'm in Nashville over these next few months, we're going to be just going in on that. Also, I'm going to have my man, DJ Promote, who's on tour right now with a hip-hop artist named Lecrae. He's also going to be in Nashville with me, and we're going to just be grinding on this thing and just try to bring something very new, very different, um, a story-driven mixtape that is going to blow your mind. And so we're already working on it. We're working on music, and um, we're hoping to bring the Heart Locker Project, Heart Locker, the Heart Locker. <laughs> the Heart Locker. Band. <laughs> um, it's, it's so hard to get that out of your head. It's just, so catchy. Just, Take away the band part to say the heart locker. It's the heart locker. <laughs> We're hoping to bring the heart locker um, and, and have these guys on the project as well, too, along with Four Season and along with some new artists that I'm really excited about um, collabing with and excited to bring you guys. Um, so, yeah, be looking out for that. Broken Dreams, um, Bright Futures, Volume 2. I'm also going to bring some different speakers on, some friends of mine. One of my friends um, down here in Florida, his name's Charlie Mitchell. He's like a personal friend and mentor. We're going to have him featured on it. Um, his some chops ups from his uh, vocal stuff that he he speaks at and whatever, and then my friend Danny Rivera who tunes in a lot. We do schools with up in New York, so mm. I, it's going to be very eclectic. It's going to be very different, and it's not something your grandma's going to like. All right, <laughs> who's going to say that? It's going to be crazy. So be crazy. we're going to have a we're going to have a lot of fun doing that. So uh, I'm su I'm super excited. So tell me this: Where do you guys see yourselves as a as a band as um as the Heart Locker? Where do you guys see yourselves in the next Five ten years, well, wow, five ten years. I, mean, I can definitely see this this band as a uh, a hub uh, for for nonprofits and for even other bands, other just organizations, businesses. You know, in a way that to kind of like again, it's all about unifying. You know, and, and just unifying but different like you know different churches or, or in, uh, you know. Nonprofits and just you just create this like unity, you know, like in, in, for a cause or for something, you know. I'm really big in again building relationships and cross promoting and you know if if someone is doing something really awesome, whether it's a business or a uh, a nonprofit or it it might be even another band, just finding a way to collaborate and, and create an impact with, within the community, uh, you know, it, it in Philly or out of Philly, you know, it does it doesn't matter. Yeah, I can see definitely. Having a little small heart locker headquarters, you know, with people who are representatives in different states, you know, and just creating something really awesome, like it, yeah, like the same way, like I see, it, like Open Motion, I can see definitely see Open Motion doing that, like yeah, it's like hey, yeah, we gotta, we have a headquarters in Florida, New York, and you know, Nevada, California, like just different random states in Detroit, that'll be awesome to do something in Detroit, like definitely can see that. So yeah, I think just you know, seeing the band just progress, both yeah, you know, musically as men. You know, I can see us becoming uh, 
uh, better, stronger men, husbands, future husbands, and fathers, uh, and also just uh, being influencers to other uh, up-and-coming up artists and bands, or even current artists and bands, because there's always something to learn from each other. So that's how I that's how I see this. Yeah, man, I think that's awesome. I would say. Um, you know, there's one thing I wanted to circle back around. You know, you were talking about your story and just what you've gone through with your father and, and, um, and you know, obviously his, his sickness and things like that. I know there's a lot of students who we come in contact with who yeah. have lost a family member or are losing a close family member or friend to some sort of illness or sickness or um, disease or whatnot. And so what would you say as been, you know, somebody who's walked through this and walked through not only just with somebody close to you, but, I mean, your own father – what would you say just to encourage them and, and where would you tell them to go if they ever find themselves just at the end of their rope not knowing what to do, um, not knowing who to hold on to or what to hold on to anymore? How would you encourage somebody going through that, maybe even tonight? Yeah, uh, you know, when when I got the news uh, about my dad being sick, it never hit, it didn't hit me. It, it It's kind of like, I have a different I have a different mentality than my mother. My mother was like she broke down, you know. Of course, that you know they've been it, it would be like I think what twenty five years now. Wow. So, yeah. So it was twenty one or twenty three or something like that. You know, twenty twenty years uh, that they've been that they were together, you know. So and actually twenty two. <laughs> so um yeah, it's something that uh it it didn't hit me, you know, until throughout the process. So for me. And everyone is different. Everyone reacts to, to news like that differently, you know. There's going to be those that are going to break down and just blame the entire world and blame, blame, you know, everyone always tends to blame God. Why, why is this is happening or something like that. Uh, you know, it's, uh, my dad wasn't a bad person, you know, and all that. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a reality check, you know, that people get sick, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it's something, you, it, it's, you can do it, take it two ways. You can either be very, very negative about it. Or you turn this turn a negative, and it sounds cliche, into a positive, you know, because you don't know where the that entire situation who's who's it gonna help if it's gonna help someone, maybe encourage them, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and um, and also it depends on the person that's sick, you know, how they're gonna take it. Because my dad was a very strong uh, uh, faith based person, and um, he has a lot of faith, and he even he influenced he was able to influence the doctors, he was able to inspire them, he was able to, you know, so. It was a different, interesting road, and, and it, it was a, I would say it was a journey I had with my dad because we were always tight, but it, we grew so much stronger in those three years, you know, and I learned so much about faith, about keeping hope, <laughs> you know, never giving up, that type of thing, and that, and that to me, that helped me in a lot of areas uh, in my life, you know, because I had to grow up kind of fast. You know, when my dad passed away, you know, uh, it's like 20, 21, and I had to grow up pretty quickly, you know, still in college, that type of thing. Um, so, you know, it's, you know, when things like that happen, again, there's this high stop, take yourself out of the, out of the, the situation and really think about how am I going to handle, how am I going to take, take, uh, attack this, this situation? How am I going to go about it pretty much, you know, because that moment, that the choice that you make, whether I'm going to take it negatively or a positive way, you know, that's going to really, really uh, affect you throughout throughout the process, you know. Uh, and uh, it's something that, of course, I don't wish upon, you know. And if someone is going through that, you know, uh, staying, you know, positive and uh, being, uh, you know, building a relationship, you know, continue to build yourself a relationship with your parents, whoever it may be, because, you know, uh, there, there's sometimes, you know, throughout life, maybe you got mad at your mom or your dad and maybe you did something, maybe you say, oh, I don't like my mom or I don't love my parents, you know, they don't understand me. You know, when that moment hits you and when it, when it, when, well, let's just fast forward it, whenever your, you know, God forbid, if your parents, if your parent passes away, like, you're going to regret so much. You're going to be like, oh my goodness, I should have said I'm sorry, you know, and it, it's, it's sad because I hear people, it, it, you know, where, you know, friends and and, and they say things about their parents, and I'm like, yo, you don't have no idea. Like, be happy that they're alive. Mm -hmm. You know, build that relationship, you know. They're your parents. Okay, cool. Sometimes, you know, parents can get on each other's nerves. Okay, that's normal. <laughs> but it's for a reason why, they, why they're why they saying certain things. And it's something where, uh, again, just taking taking that the life lessons, and it, it's it's molding you, 
And when it comes to this this particular situation, man, it's just you know being positive, staying focused. You know, be with people who are going to help you and are going to be a support. You know, that's one thing that's very important. Just making sure you reach out to people, whether they're older or the same age. You know, that they're there for you. Real friends. I, uh, it, I'm glad for the friends that I have because they were there for me. You know, and so yeah. it was that that comfort and. Uh, and and again, like this, the situation is was a little bit different with my father because it was like my when they told when doctors told my dad, hey, you have cancer. He sat the doctors down, and he said, okay, so what do we do? And then they were like kind of shocked, like they were like, oh, we thought you was gonna freak out. Why is he sitting us down? Like <laughs> like he was kind of counseling them, you know. And um, you know that made an impact. So every through every tough situation, there will always be a form of an impact. You know. Yeah. It's it's how you go about it, of course, you know. So yeah, that's I think that's how I would say. Just remain, just stay focused, be positive. You know, positive vibes are good. You know, and whether it might be tough, stick it through. Don't uh, don't uh, you know if you have if you're breaking down, reach out to someone. Don't keep it bottled in. That's one thing. Don't keep it bottled in because that can really hurt you. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think that's some great advice, man. I'm I'm learning a lot just listening to you talk right there too, and I think that is all that is so key you know like everything you said is just so key about life and relationships and whether it's family or whether it's friends whether it's your homie down the street whether yeah. you know like no matter who it is like those are all things that we can we can take and we can learn from situations and life is short man like I, yeah. I heard somebody say one time is the way they said it was everything you're going through is preparing you um, for everything you're going to go through you know and so everything we experience on today is going to help us get through something tomorrow. Um, everything I go through a week from now, I can look back 10 years ago and go, oh, I was going through that then, and that was all a part of my journey. And yeah. so uh, if you're watching tonight and you're just like, man, I'm there's a lot of stuff going on in my life, and I, I just tuned in to hear you guys goof off or whatever. I hope <laughs> that you take away that. It's just like don't do life alone. Don't ever think you're doing life alone. Um, there are people out there who care about you, care about your existence, care about your purpose here on this side of, of, of um, eternity, and we are excited about your future and your destiny, and we want to help propel you into that. And yeah. so make sure you're surrounding yourself with people you know, that are, are doing that as well, that are protecting your purpose and not um, permitting it and giving you, giving you reason to live. And so, man, it's been super cool, encouraging, fun, uh, hanging out with you. Yeah, man, thanks. If you guys don't know, definitely go check out their music. Go check out their work. I know they got some some new stuff coming in the pipeline for 2014, which I'm super stoked about. Hopefully, yeah. we'll get to collaborate. We'll get to do uh, yeah. maybe a music video or something together. I'm super excited about that. For sure. Um, I don't know when exactly, but I know I come through your area, pretty close to your area in the yeah. next few months. I think I sent you uh, kind of a... Anyway, so feel free to come out, hang yeah. out with us, and uh, and if you're listening right now, you're like, I want to come out to a show, um, we can make that happen too. <laughs> Go to hopeemotion.info, our website, and you can see all the dates uh, that I'm doing, Group One Crew, as well as just our dates with Hope Emotion. I put them all there uh, for family and friends. I consider everyone who watches family and friends, and so... Um, if you're interested in coming to a show, just hit me up on our website, and um, we'll see what we can do to help you out or uh, just give you the right places to go to get the tickets and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, man, so I've, I've had a good time tonight, and yeah, I'm, I'm going to go try and get a Starbucks coffee and see if try, it's my Try. Sneak off. Sneak off. I want that, I want that <laughs> coffee, man. There's a 24-hour one right up the road. Maybe my brother-in-law's off work because he'll go with me. Oh, nice. <sighs> yes. <laughs> That'll be awesome. Sneak in that caffeine, man. So. But hey, I'm super. I'm super excited for you guys. I'm excited Thanks, for where your futures are headed. I hope to connect with you some more on some branding stuff for Hope Emotion, and yeah, sure. I appreciate your just constant support and um, vision to help our organization move forward. And yeah, and we're here for you guys too, man. We believe in you guys and what you're doing. So. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for, again. Thanks for the opportunity, man. I, I know that this year we're going to be collaborating on stuff, so for sure, this it's going to be fun. This awesome, gonna be awesome, man. Well, I will be blasting this link out for the next week. So tell everybody to go back and watch it, all your friends, and um, and it'll it'll stay on our YouTube page and all that stuff. So I'm excited, dude. Yeah, man. Me too, man. It's going to be awesome. Cool, bro. All right, man. Well, have a good week, and I will talk to See. you soon. Sorry. Peace. See you, bro.